Good morning. It's Tammy, <clears throat> excuse me, with Real Southern Woman. And the sun is coming in brighter today. It has been cloudy now for quite a few days. So it's going to glare on my classes. There ain't nothing I can do. Um, but anyway, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. I need to talk a little louder. I don't have my, my Bluetooth this morning. And uh, we're going to talk about Chapter 9, which is the Kingdom Era. Out of our 30 days to understanding the Bible, and yesterday I said that David was the first king, and David was not the first king. Saul was the first king, but David was the first righteous king. How's that? <laughs> so um, it's good to see everybody this morning on a Thursday morning, uh, bright and early, 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, I hope y'all are doing well this morning and have had your cup of coffee already. I'm very disappointed because... I like a certain creamer in my coffee, and when I got to the store yesterday, they were completely out, and they were also out of sweet cream, so I had to buy half and half and use sugar, and it's just not the same as what I'm used to, and it's amazing how if your cup of coffee don't taste like it's supposed to, it's just not as pleasant to drink it, you know, it's not, it's just not right, so I've got to go get me some good creamer today. Anyway, we are <clears throat> going to talk about chapter 9 this morning, which is the kingdom era. And um, he starts out by saying, by nature, man desires something he cannot have. And that is total freedom. And that he's, he gives this crazy example about how uh, you can't have your freedom and have something else too or something like that. He gives the example of a toothbrush. He says, um, you can have freedom for a tooth from the toothbrush, but then you'll get cavities. So you'll be in bondage to cavities. Uh, or you can make yourself a slave to the toothbrush, and you can be free of cavities. So I thought that was kind of weird. It says, throughout life, we're constantly making choices, and for those choices, we pay certain inescapable consequences. Freedom comes with a price, and a lot of us know that, don't we? A lot of us have to learn the hard way, and we're going to talk about the kingdom era, and the kings of Israel wanted total freedom, okay? It says the kingdom era was a very turbulent time with many ups and downs, and they would have a right, when a righteous king would rule, then the people, the nation would prosper, and when an unrighteous king would rule, the nation would falter, okay? Um, and these are good examples for us in our life, how if we follow God, um, we're more apt to prosper. I mean, it doesn't mean we will have everything perfect, but he's, we're um, blessed by God. And if we're, if we're not, then we're not blessed by God. It says the storyline summary. These are your fill in the blanks for the next page. It says, David is the greatest king and the new monarchy. Spell monarchy. M-O-N-A-R-C-H-Y. It says, he's, it's followed, a new monarchy is followed by a succession of mostly unrighteous kings. So your second blank is unrighteous. U-N-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S. And God eventually judges, it's the third blank, Israel for her sin, sending her into exile. All right. So, uh, the first, the, the four points in this era, he always gives us four points, okay? One is the United Kingdom. Two is the division of the kingdom. Three is the Northern Kingdom. Four is the southern kingdom. So there's a united kingdom as a whole. Then they break out into a civil war, which is the division of the kingdom. Then part of them go north, part of them go south. So then they have a northern and a southern kingdom. So they split the kingdom after the war. Okay, so the united kingdom, the first part is in First and Second Samuel, it says. And it says um, they demand... They demand that they want a king to God, and God allows Samuel as the last judge to anoint Saul. 
But it says that Saul is not a righteous king. And so God doesn't honor his reign or establish his family on the throne of Israel. It says his successor, David, though having shortcomings, is a righteous king. And Israel prospers under David. And then it says David's son, Solomon, becomes king upon his death. And he rules righteously at first and then drifts from the Lord like a lot of us do, right? Uh, number two is the divided kingdom. That was the United Kingdom kind of in a nutshell, okay? The divided kingdom, um, it says as a result of Solomon's um, unrighteousness, the kingdom... Uh, breaks out into a civil war and they fight and it says that 10 of the tribes go north and they call their um, king it's the northern kingdom okay and then two of the tribes go south and it's Judah and Benjamin so they call their kingdom Judah after the largest family which was the Judah uh, tribe for the larger tribe it says, then we go into a northern kingdom. Then we talk about, so anyway, there was a united kingdom where everybody was united. Then there was a civil war, okay? Then after Solomon became king because he did become unrighteous. And then after that, there's a northern and a southern kingdom. In the northern kingdom, it says uh, that J Jeroboam commands the northern kingdom he is unrighteous, and every king after him, which was 19 of them, um, is also unrighteous. And because of the unrighteousness, God raises up Assyria and conquers the northern kingdom. Now, the southern kingdom only had the two tribes, and um, it said that it was inconsistent. So part of the time... A king would rule righteously, and part of the time a king would rule unrighteously. Uh, but remember, the northern kingdom was always unrighteous. So they got uh, taken over a lot quicker than the southern kingdom. But it says that um, it lasted 400 years, and they had eight unrighteous kings out of 20. And it says that Judah's sin finally catch up with her and God brings judgment, okay, for them being inconsistent. So remember that in our daily walk with God. Um, he really wants us all the way. Um, and that's hard sometimes. But here he does um, judge Judah for being inconsistent. And a lot of us are inconsistent. We'll be close to God for a few months and then we'll stop. Or, you know, we're just not faithful in our, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else. He doesn't like that either, okay? It says that, uh, that he raised up Babylonia and uh, they gathered all of the leaders, the artisans, the musicians, the promising children, and they take them away into captivity in Babylonia. And that's it. I mean, it's not a real happy era. Um, it's all about the kings and the, the kings ruling the Israelites. And it's about a war and it's about um, their unrighteousness. And that's pretty much it. So the four major subjects in the kingdom era were United Kingdom, the Divided Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom, and the Southern Kingdom. So he has a self-test, and it, one's called the Unrighteous Kingdom. And we know that was the Northern Kingdom because they, every king was unrighteous. And then the next one is a new monarchy. And that's what we call the new uh, United Kingdom, okay? Because they're ruling under a king. All right, then there's one that says the inconsistent kingdom. And remember, that was the southern kingdom uh, that was very inconsistent. They had eight out of 20 kings that were righteous. 
and um, then you have a civil war, which is um, the divided kingdom, okay? Uh, that's it in a nutshell. Look how much we've learned so quickly. And I know it's just a summary of what's in our Bible, but it helps us to understand um, why things happen like they did. Um, he also, in our storybook, has us draw on our map from uh, Israel to Assyria, which is up at the top of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And then he has us draw an arrow from Judah to Babylonia, which is in the right in the middle of the where they meet, the two rivers meet, which is close to where Eden was um, when we started. So that's pretty much it. And to me, the, the thing that we are supposed to get out of this the most is that God wants us to be righteous through uh, and in the Old Testament, there was no way really for them to be righteous besides the law. They had a really hard time. We have looked at yesterday's lesson, a period of 400 years. We've looked at today's lesson. Well, yesterday's was probably even more than that. Today's was a per period of 400 years. And throughout that time, the people kept falling into sin, falling into sin, falling into sin, and being unrighteous because they just would not follow God's rules. And um, so I think what we are supposed to get out of this today is that we need to follow God, okay? And the good thing about us today is that Jesus Christ has come to die for us, and uh, and if we're saved, born again, like the Bible says, and we believe in Jesus Christ, and we know that we're sinners, and we admit that we're sinners, um, and ask God for our forgiveness, he then saves us. Now, once we're saved, he also gives us the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And because we have the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, um, we are much better off than those people were that didn't have that extra uh, miracle of God, okay? Because getting the Holy Spirit is a miracle of God, y'all. And and he's always with us to help God lead and direct us. And the bad thing about the people in the Old Testament is all they had was the law. It would be like, well, just before we're saved, all we have is the Bible. Um, but you know as well as I know, we can't do it by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit to help us because all of us are unrighteous, okay? Um, so let's just get that out of it. We are to be faithful and try our best to be close to God and not put him on the back burner and just use him when we need him, okay? Um, let's say our prayers this morning. I hope y'all enjoyed the kingdom era. Um, of course, a couple of my favorite people are in that era because I like a couple of the kings. And um, we will come back tomorrow, and I believe the next one is the exile. So now that they've taken the people um, into Assyria and into Babylonia. I guess we'll have to talk about that and them being in exile. So let's say our prayers and happy, happy Thursday. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. Another new day you've given us. And here we have beautiful weather and it's nice and cool. And we thank you for that. We thank you for our, for your son, Jesus Christ, who died, um, so that we would have a way to be righteous with you. Uh, for we know that our fleshly body is not righteous. And without him, we can do nothing. And um, we cannot even communicate with you the way that you would have us to. Um, please help us go throughout our day. Help us be reminded that you are our creator and help us be reminded who we are in comparison to you so that we can worship and fear you, Lord. Um, thank you for everything you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good day. I'm about to go outside. The trash day is today. And um, I need to put some trash out. <laughs> Before he comes, I don't really think our trash gets picked up until after lunch. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I will see y'all tomorrow talking about exile. I hope you're enjoying this. This is our 
for our second week, and it's going really well. Hope y'all are learning a lot. Bye. I love you. Thanks for tuning in.